Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and we're here on the shooting supply stand with Anthony. Thanks for, for joining. No problem at all. Uh, at the British Shooting Show 2023. And whilst we're not taking a look at a new product, there's been a lot of talk and questions recently about the Tipman Arms, uh, the M422 rifles. And Shooting Supplies is the UK distributor for Tipman. So thought who better than to go through the changes. So we've been having a little bit of uh, a chat beforehand. It turns out there are actually three different generations with slight tweaks, with the latest uh, offering quite a lot more in terms of aftermarket drop-in components. Yeah. So, so what has changed? This is a Gen 3 rifle, yeah. right? So this is the latest version now. Um, the biggest change came really for, um, for the bits and pieces was really going from what I call the Gen 2 to the Gen 3, but really the Gen 1 to 2 was such small changes. So Gen 1 to Gen 2, I think we've, we've spoke to before about this, was when they upgraded a little bit in pieces. So you've got the, the hand grip changed to a slightly better hand grip and the nickel was then became uh, nickel coated basically. So just some aesthetics really. The general guns and the dimensions and everything else were pretty much the same. They were the very, very early ones, probably in the first year of their production. When they changed them um, after serial number 18,000 was the, the mark off. They're basically sequential um, numbers. So this one, for instance, is number 36,464. Um, basically, they've gone to a slightly different specification on the lower. So if I flip this open and we'll have a look. So really, if you put them side by side, you really couldn't tell the difference. And I think this is what a lot of people are having issues with is yes. you talk about the compatibility, which we'll get onto. Yep. But the way that you tell the difference is that you're saying that up to serial number 3000 is the Gen 1. About that, yep. Yeah, yep. around sort of 3000 to uh, 18,000 18, is the Gen 2. And anything after 18,000 is the Gen All 3. All the Gen 3s, yep. which is the current spec. So basically there were some subtle little changes inside. Originally you had to run, if you wanted an ambidextrous safety, you'd have to run the Tipman safety because of the sizing on the outside um, of the lower wouldn't fit a normal mil spec safety. That's now been changed. So any mil spec safety will fit in there. So you've got a huge range of, um, of choice on that now to fit in to be compatible with the trigger. The other big thing was really with the triggers, because the early guns, again, they'd run things like the Elfman trigger. Um, there was a few that would run, I'd probably say 20% of the market of the, the triggers and bits and pieces would run, but not the vast majority of the popular ones. Now they've changed them again internally, most drop-in triggers will now work a treat. So again, there's probably still maybe 5% of the market on these things that wouldn't work, but the majority do. For instance, Trigger Tech, they've just launched one that will drop in, whereas the previous Trigger Tech ones wouldn't be compatible. They've got now an AR one that will work. So that's great advancements with the gun, because obviously people like changing these things. They Absolutely. like you know, upgrading bits and pieces. I always thought, I mean, I've still got a standard trigger in mine. <laughs> I've just um, failed it a little bit, made it a bit yeah. crisper, but I know people like to have competition triggers in these things, because if it improves their shooting and competition-wise, uh, it's I the mean, key thing. It's something that I'm familiar with. You know, coming from the 1522, the 1522 can be very yeah. particular oh, with yeah. aftermarket triggers. You usually yeah. have to shim them and tweak them for it. That's why the likes of Black Rifle make their own Yes, uh, trigger exactly. for 1522 exactly. um, and I think I previously reviewed I think the Gen 1 or the Gen 2 and that was one of the points that I made in terms of upgradability Definitely. putting Definitely. you know safeties on there putting new triggers in there yeah. you know you want to have that option for competition so there's lots of people that rave about the, the Tipman and yeah. certainly with these improvements I can I can see why and yeah. they're certainly a staple on the competition yeah. circuit now. I mean, it's really nice to see that Tipman have made that change. You Absolutely. know, we, sit, we feed a lot of information back to Tipman um, on the market. I mean, even for instance, just the, the models now they run with. If, if you remember the old classic, had the dropout panels. Yes, yeah. Um, they don't do that one anymore. But, but it was us who suggested, said, look, you want an M-Lock 4 end on there. Everyone wants M-Lock 4 ends. You can put bolt bits and pieces, hand mm -hmm. grips, whatever. And they've run with it, and it's great to see that they're listening to customers, they're listening to feedback, 
Um, I mean, for instance, there's, there's another in, uh, extra they've done on this one. That's their new uh, Raptor style charging handle. I know, again, Black Rifle do one yes, as well. We yeah. do that one as well. That's a great one. Tipman have now made their own. Just these little bits and pieces really make when you accessorize these guns, you know, and they all work. And obviously, Tipman with the testing, they're so rigorous with testing these things. When they produce and make something, it really is, you know, well done. So it's ready to go from, from day one with no teething problems as you get well, with some of these we, things. We saw it recently um, at Double Juice. So the Double Juice uh, Rangers, yes, uh, they're yes. running the Tipmans they are, for yeah. their. Um, pay and play days yeah. and I mean they've been through a whole catalogue of different guns and they're, yeah. they're sticking with the Tipmans they say you know you put the ammo in it and it goes bang yeah. which is which they what had you want to the retire other. their first one they had yep. about six months ago I rec Scott reckons it had probably done close to 700,000 rounds <laughs> before it was retired it's battered it yes, is yeah. actually, I've actually asked for it back we've got it at the shop um, it's very worn out. We, we saw um, a very of very models, worn out. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you look at that and go seven hundred thousand rounds. I'm not surprised. You yeah, know. well beyond what I, th I think even Tipman would ever expect to exactly. be put through. And th and in an exactly. environment like a pay and play at um, a double juice, they they're get used abused. yeah used yeah. and abused. Yeah. So yeah. if they yeah. can stand up for that and a range that is you know putting down. You know, millions of rounds of, uh, down range each year. Exactly. You know, they, they know what they're talking about and they're going to know what can stand yeah. up to the punishment. So, Definitely. so yeah, it's great to see, as you say, Tipman listening to the feedback. Yep. And also they've made those improvements to, I think, you know, what is already in a, a popular rifle yeah, on the yeah. circuit, make it yeah, yeah. even better um, and you know, a better competition gun overall. Uh, so yeah, Anthony, thank you very much no problem uh, for your time no and, and taking us through that. Guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button and make sure you are subscribed for any future videos. And of course, as always, hope to see you soon. Thank you.